Steam Next Fest was happening from the 6th to the 13th of February. And guess what? I played some demos, and I have some favorites. We have 10 today, so let's get started. Return is a side-scrolling RPG shooter being created by Dead Unicorn. The art style of Return is interesting and I like it a lot, but I can see the issues that can come up with items or enemies that would be rather hard to see because of the way the art style is. So really I'm only saying be clear with showing the player what is going on at all times, unless it is an intended mechanic to hide specific attacks or items. The boss you find in the demo, the Gravekeeper, is simple in design when it comes to mechanics, but I think it's great for giving the player a final test to see if they got down the basics of the game, especially with the conservation of Stanima. Also, there were some glitches that I came across, for instance, bullets disappearing upon reload, and then going through a door that went back to the beginning of the stage. I found that really strange. Oh yeah, and let me press up on the dialogue options, please. Otherwise, you got a good game. Bionic Bay is an atmospheric platformer created by CycleFlow Studio. Bionic Bay looks stunning, but the movement feels amazing, and I already feel like this game has potential for really cool speedrunning stuff. I wasn't expecting to have as much fun as I did with the demo either. I guess it could be due to me not knowing anything about it besides the placement switching mechanic. I have high hopes for the game. Bionic Bay could be really popular with people who enjoy cool movement options in video games. Star Hearts Launch Point is an 8-bit precision platformer that's being created by RCAP LLC. Honestly, Star Hearts was beating my ass at the start, getting used to the controls and messing around with the slide attack a little bit too much. Just like Bionic Bay, I enjoyed the movement in Star Hearts a lot, but I do feel the game is a little bit floaty. Now, when I have the orange stance on, I can simply dive kick and land on the ground quicker. On the other hand, you have the purple stance, which is what you would probably start with, and it does not have any options like that at all. I don't know if you all want to have any crazy movement options for the default stance, but I think you can probably use a simple one, maybe like a fast fall like you would see in a platform fighter like Super Smash Bros. It could make platforming a lot easier, and it would be different than the dive kick as that one goes in an angle and the fast fall could go straight down. And knowing that the first Kickstarter you all did failed makes me sad, because this game is really cool, but at least you didn't give up. What you have here is fantastic and deserves a successful Kickstarter launch. And Nenra is a 3D hack and slash being created by, uh, Zahid Jilani? I hope I didn't butcher your name, dude. Sorry if I did. Listen, Anenra has great art design. The character looks and sounds badass. And the combat, just for the demo, was near perfect. 
but I hated how I would accidentally click the picture button in the middle of combat, as it would ruin the flow. It would be great if you could allow us to change the button, or just outright unbind it. Listen man, I'm trying to assassinate people, I'm not trying to take a selfie. Then the enemies that fight you with their bare fists, I found to be very annoying to deal with, as they are always set to dodge your attacks barring that one ranged move you have in the wave based mode. You also can't block or parry their attacks. You have to hit them in the air. So I mean, I guess that said, there's a way to beat them. I just find it annoying because if I have to fight multiple of them, eh, it gets a little bit rough. And I can see it getting more rough in the future. And maybe that one I could chalk up as a me problem. But hey, at least I could take them to Duff City. Even though I said all that about your game, doing combos just feels orgasmic, and I can't get enough of it, even though I'm a little bit bad at it. Seriously, this game is sick. After Image is an anime-styled Metroidvania, being created by Aerogon Shanghai. I knew After Image was gonna be a stunning game when I viewed only the pictures, but that's just the thing, they're only JPEGs. When I got to the title screen, it blew me away, and it was just water. Playing the game? It looked great, but I had to check to see if I could teabag. And I can, 10 out of 10. From the demo, I felt like there was nothing wrong for me to point out, but I do have a personal gripe. Monsters having an active hitbox when doing nothing. It sucks. Personally, the enemies already being a solid object, stopping you from going through them, is enough. But after that, I can't exactly come up with anything else. The world is interesting too. I would love to see more of this. Spearfall is a combat-heavy 2D platformer that's also a roguelike being created by Gentle Giants. Spiritfall slaps so hard. To imagine I only knew about this game because I saw it on a tweet some time ago, I had to tell myself to stop playing it to write this. Even if I feel this way about the game though, it's not perfect, and they even delayed their game for a month because they also believe the same thing. For bugs, all I really had to deal with was being stuck in a pose after doing an attack. Wasn't exactly game breaking, but it just looked a little bit awkward. However, as far as suggesting things for the game, I think for the hidden rifts, instead of three of the same monster, you randomize it. Because having the same tactic for all of them can, well, be a little bit boring. Adding like two more types of those shadow creatures as well would be pretty nice too. But no pressure on that front. I can't think of anything else. I can't wait to play this game. A Sister's Journey is a 2D precision platformer, somewhat like Celeste, being created by Florin Lackner. A sister's journey is hard. I can't go a couple of inches without uh, taking a tumble. Controls feel tight, so I can't complain about that. It's just a hard game. And listen, I don't quite know what else to say about this. I played it and it kicked my butt. I think it's a solid game. And I haven't came across any bugs that are game breaking. All my deaths in that indie game were my fault. Trust me. But I gotta say, the game has gorgeous pixel art. Good job on that. Proto 
Protodroid Delta is a 3D platformer in a solar punk setting being created by Adam Karim. And think of this game being closer to Mega Man X on a 3D scale. The Delta demo was short and sweet, and that was all I needed to see from it. The game is good, but I did notice that the camera needed to be a little bit faster so I can aim and lock onto things better. When you do have a settings menu, please consider having a feature where you can adjust the speed of the camera turning. The dashing in the game feels a little bit odd having startup acceleration. The mechanic might feel a little bit better if it had an instantaneous speed for that moment. And um, I'm not sure why Delta can't air dash. If you thought about making that an upgrade, I would just give it to the player from the start. Oh, and uh, I love the character designs. I really do. As far as all the indie games I've played, in my opinion, it's up there for me. So, fantastic job. Coven is an old school FPS, or to some, a boomer shooter, and it's being created by Gator Shins. Coven did have a demo before this during Halloween, but I never got to it. Coven being closer to Hexen rather than Doom, I was excited to try some spells, but that didn't quite happen. The feel and look of the game reminded me of Cultic, another indie game I've played, especially the music, which I enjoyed. The gameplay itself was awesome. The weapons I got to sample for both melee and ranged combat felt great, and uh, I didn't realize testicles were able to be eaten and heal you, but now I know. The only two issues I came across were getting myself stuck and the text in the UI, mm, I think it can be cleaned up. The start of Coven is very unique as well. It's nice to know that they're only killing me because they can't be a cute magical girl themselves. Good game. I can't wait to be the best magical girl that ever was. Now, the honorable mentions. There were a lot of indie game demos that I didn't get to play, and there were some games I was reminded of because of this event. Gestalt, Steam and Cinder, Gravity Circuit, and Shady Night were some of them, as I have talked about them in the past, in a prior Corthy festival, and it was nice to see them again. But also, I would like to give a shout out to two more games, Miss Light and Kikimashio. I've recently talked about those games too, and I wanted to talk about them again because they also left their demo up for Steam Next Fest. I thought it would be nice to give them another little mention. Now, on to the last game I played. Radio the Universe is an action-adventure game being created by 6E. Radio the Universe has been known about since 2012, and that's a long time. I've known about Radio the Universe for 10 plus years. That said, I was really excited to play the demo during Steam Next Fest. So what did I think about this indie game demo? I loved everything from the setting and the world. Beautifully desolate. I guess would be the best way for me to put it, but the gameplay I only found to be just okay. Now that's not exactly a bad thing, but in some aspects I felt that the combat was a little bit awkward for me. Trying to attack and dodge in different directions felt off. As far as the attacking goes, maybe I felt like there needed to be a faster animation, but considering you're holding a big weapon, I'm not sure about that. And not to mention, you might have an ability where you have a faster attack animation. So that could just be me. Anyway, to play the demo for Radio the Universe after waiting for so long, it made me smile. Keep up the good work. But you know, it's not such a bad thing to update us on the things that you're doing with the game. At least every now and then. Just show us you're alive and breathing. But no ASMR of you breathing in the mic. I wouldn't like that very much. Instead, give us some gameplay footage every now and then. Maybe some JPEGs.
Playing these indie games during the Steam Next Fest were a blast. And I do have a personal favorite, which being Spiritfall. And that's not to slight on the other games. It just hit different for me. If any of these other games have piqued your interest, then please go ahead and put them on your Steam wish list. Each game dev has worked hard on their game, and I just want their hard work to pay off. So help them out. Remember, it is up to you to give indie games a chance. But that's it from me. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to this channel. It would mean a lot if you did. And if you want updates on what I'm going to do next, please follow me on Twitter.